This series is brought to you by you. Thank you so much for all of my patrons and the people who have used the Jackson's affiliate links. It is thanks to you guys that this series have been made possible. Thank you so much. Welcome back to the Colossal Color Showdown. This is season three, episode five, and we're gonna start taking a look at the manganese violet. And with manganese violet, we have basically PV16s all the way and they are mostly called manganese violet. The only one that isn't called manganese violet is the Sennelier, which is called the red violet. Let's go through what brands we have for this episode. We have Schmincke, Sennelier, Da Vinci, Romagemore, Rembrandt, Block X, Turner, Old Holland, Another Old Holland, My Mary Blue, Ken Bromley and SAA. So there's lots of new brands because the bigger brands like Dan Smith, Holbein, they don't have manganese violet in their range. And for those of you who don't know, we have Block X, which is, I think, Australian. Ken Bromley is a art supply shop in UK, a bit like Cass Arts, if you've heard of Cass Arts, and it's their own range of watercolor paints. And then SAA is another British art supply store. It's funny, their website has been down for ages, ever since I started planning this series back in January. We're now in May, and today it's come back online. So I was going to say you can't get hold of these anymore, but now you can again. It's very confusing, but I'm glad the website is back. The thing to note about the SAA is that all the other paints are PV16, whereas the SAA one is PV18, which is the ferrite light of violet rather than the manganese violet, but they still call it manganese violet. So so let's take a look at the Maston. In general, Magnus Violet's going to be medium strength colour with a soft ready violet hue, a little bit granulating, not as easy to rewet as maybe your Thalos and Quins. That kind of colour, I think, in the same category as the Cobalts, and you get kind of the idea how it should behave. In terms of Maston, I have to address the big elephant in the room, which is the Ken Bromley's one, I've double, triple, quadruple checked. It does say PV16 on the tube. This is a Ken Bromley tube and it definitely says PV16. It even says manganese ammonium phosphate, just in case you were in any doubt. But uh, that's, I just don't believe that it's PV16. It's PV16. But I'm sorry, there's no way I'm going to call it out. There's no way this can be PV60. This is way, way more like a dioxin violet. And you'll see throughout this episode or next episode that how it behaves a lot differently to the other manganese violets and a lot more like the dioxin violet. It's way too smooth. It's way too intense of a color. It's transparent. I'll show you as we go on. A problem you are going to encounter with a lot of manganese violets that they are going to be harder to rewet than others. But I'm going to show you which ones are harder to rewet even within the manganese violet. One is Rembrandt, another is Turner. The Old Holland manganese violet red was easy to wet but they have another shade called manganese violet blue and that was hard to rewet. So even within the same company, same pigment, you're going to have variations in how easy a colour is going to be to rewet. Also, my Mary Blue. I just don't seem to have good luck with my Mary Blue. I have a half pan and I've noticed this in a couple of other colors that we're going to have in this series, but the paper that it's wrapped in got stuck on the paper. And I'm sorry, but if you are selling professional quality watercolor commercially, this is a quality issue and this is a wrapping issue that should have been resolved. So I get really annoyed when commercial artist grade watercolors aren't tested properly or the wrappings aren't tested properly to the point that you get pieces of paper stuck to it. So there was that problem. What I did was I wet the surface, uh, waited a little bit and then just scraped the top layer off. But even then, even after getting rid of the paper, it was very hard to re-wet. This is the most hard to re-wet colour out of all of them. And it's also, as you can see, very, very pale. And this paleness lasted all the way through the test. 
I've made a decent dent in the half pan now and even then it's still very hard to rewear and it's still this faint. So quality control issue I think is definitely a problem for My Merry Blue because this isn't the first time that I um, tried a My Merry Blue color where it was really hard to rewear and really faint colors. A lot of people have commented that the tubes behave better than the half pans. I happen to get the half pans more easier so I've been sticking with the half pans but this isn't okay. And I'm kind of glad that I bought the half pound because then I can point out to you guys, hey, don't go for the My Mary Blue, at least not the half pound ones. Going back to the hues, the manganese violet red is obviously the most red one. It's a standout redder color than the other colors. The manganese violet by Blocks is also pretty on the red side, although the manganese violet by Blocks is very smooth, whereas you can see on other brands, manganese violet, I would expect them to be more granulating. I would say these three are similar in behavior. They're more intense color, they are less granulating, much more smooth, whereas these guys are less intense, but much more granulating. Interesting color to note is the Red Violet by Sennelier. The other colors, the granulation is the same color as the Mastone, whereas here I can see two colors happening here. There's a bluish color and a pinkish color happening here. So if that is something you're looking for, then this will be a interesting choice for you. I experienced two different kinds of bubbling and until I did this test sheet, even though I've experienced lots of bubbling in previous seasons, I never had two different kinds of bubbling happening on the same sheet and I'm like okay there's actually two different kinds. So the Da Vinci one had one kind of bubbling and that's that bubbling that when you put the paint down on paper little bubbles start to just pop. It's almost like it's bubbling up and just you see no bubble on the mixture that you're putting down but then bubbles will appear and just pop. That was Da Vinci's whereas the old Holland ones they both experienced air bubbles but they're the kind of bubbles where when you're rubbing the paint quite vigorously because they're kind of hard to rewet. Well this one is definitely hard to rewet and you see more bubbles here than you do on here but I've experienced with both of them where you kind of whip up a bubble or two into your paint mixture as you're dissolving the paint. So that's definitely something to look forward to. But yeah, it's really interesting to know that we actually have two different kinds of bubbling. Let's move on to the prices. The most expensive brand in the UK is again, no surprise, is Da Vinci. And the most affordable brand for the UK is the Ken Bromley's one, although it's not exactly the manganese blue that we're used to. So what is the most affordable kind of manganese looking one? I would say is Turner. In terms of US market, the most expensive one is Blocks. Blocks is from Australia, so it's imported. Any episode where we're gonna have Blocks for the US market, it's gonna be super expensive. I don't know why it's so expensive for the US, but it's very, very expensive. Is it worth it? That's entirely up to you but I do think there's lots of more affordable options if that price is the thing that you're looking for. The cheapest one, the most economical one for America is the Manganese Violet by Rembrandt at 54 cents per milliliter. So there's a huge difference between the most expensive and the least expensive one. It's roughly quadruple the price and the question is whether you see quadruple the difference. I would argue that Rembrandt one is way more manganese violety than the Blocks one, but I would assume that if you're in Australia, Blocks one will be very affordable for you. Then we have the opacity test, and again, <laughs> this test shows how different the Ken Bromley one is to all the other ones. All the other ones are either very opaque, like the Schmincke one, the Roman Schmoll, Block X, Turner, SAA, or mid opacity, Sennelier Da Vinci, there's always some opacity to manganese violet, except for Ken Bromley, which I would say is very transparent. It's not that chalky look that these guys have, so I would say that that's the odd one out, out of these guys. Finally, for this video, we're going to look at the gradation, and I think this beautiful, it's where manganese violet or any granulating color really shines is when you put a lot of water to it. The standout one for me though is the Sennelier's Red Violet because you get 
the blue granulation really happening and then the pink intensifying in the cauliflower i think that is so much color texture rather than granulation texture that's happening on top of the granulation so i think for a single tube of paint you get a lot of characteristics and a lot of different textures happening on a different level to all the other ones so all the other ones are granulating except down here let's just ignore that for now all the other ones are granulating but it's the same kind of granulation if you want to go for the more granulating one i recommend things like the da vinci Rembrandt one and Turner one. The Da Vinci one is the most granulating. The least granulating out of the granulating ones, I would say, is My Mary Blue. But that could entirely be because it's so faint that we can't see the granulation. After that would be the Manganese Violet Blue by Old Holland. Let's look at these. So I have to say, even though here I was like, oh, that looks a bit smooth compared to the others, you do get a decent amount of granulation once you water it down. So that's good news. Whereas these two guys are very, very non-granulating. There's no granulation. There's no way this is the same pigment as the rest of this. Very transparent. I'm not happy about this one. In terms of the SAA one, it behaves very similarly to the Cambrunley one, but at least they're honest that it's PV18 and not PV16. Although I don't know why they chose PV18 over PV16. That's an interesting point. If you'd like to try these beautiful manganese violet colors, then I have the perfect companion dot card for you for this month. It is the manganese violet. And you get the Schmicke one, Sennelier one, Da Vinci, Rembrandt, Block X, Turner, Old Holland, and Ken Bromley. I know the Ken Bromley one's odd, but I thought I'd put it on there so you can see for yourself how different it is. Also, if you like dioxin violet, you might really like this color because it's a little bit different from the other dioxin violet. So I hope you have fun with it. This is a great way to try out all these colors and see which manganese violet is the perfect one for you without having to buy whole tubes uh, to test out only to find out you don't like some of them. So if you'd like to receive this dot card, then all you have to do is head on over to patreon.com forward slash ottocano and sign up to the appropriate tiers and I will be sending these dot cards to you. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we're gonna go through the lift and glaze, the salt test, how it looks on cotton paper, as well as the color mixes and tint instruments. So do look forward to that. Do let me know in the comments down below what you saw of these colors and what you think of the Ken Bromley one. Like, are you feeling as sussed as I am about this color? I'm like, I don't, what is happening here? They've either mislabeled the tube with the dioxazine violet or they don't use the right pigment. I don't know what is happening, but I'm not happy about this. Do also let me know which one would be on your definitely no-go list. It'd be interesting to find out which ones you're like, oh no, no, I don't want that one. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.